we are uh, lecture 23 in the series. Uh, in these lectures, for past two lectures, I have been discussing neutron reflectometry, specifically polarized neutron reflectometry for thin film characterization. And in this lecture, I will discuss the data analysis techniques for uh, neutron reflectometry. I will familiarize you with reflectometry instruments, one which is there at Dhruva and few more from the best sources to give a general idea about the kind of instrument that are available and then I will deal with examples or studies that have been done using the instruments. So with this I am starting today's lecture, first the data analysis part. Uh, I had introduced you to parrot formalism which can give you the model reflectivity for a model structure in real space. So this is, if you remember it, I wrote it for you. an expression like this. Where this was a, I can say layers, I can say layers of known refractive index, that means they have their densities, thicknesses, all embedded in this model and for this model, if I want to calculate the reflective reflect, reflectivity index, which is R n comma n plus one, where I wrote it as a n square, if I remember it correct. So this is the reflectivity for the nth and n plus 1th layer at the nth layer boundary between n minus 1th and nth layer. So this is the reflectivity at the boundary uh, of n and sorry this is between n minus 1 and nth layer. So this is the reflectivity at the boundary but as I mentioned earlier that uh, to calculate this reflectivity, I need the reflectivity at the next boundary which is n and n plus 1th layer. Number of layers are going up and then this becomes this is a recursion formula. So to know r n n minus 1, I need r n n plus 1, so on and so forth. If n minus 1 n n was q n minus 1 minus q n q n minus 1 plus q n which is a reflected amplitude between n minus 1 and nth layer if no other layers were present. So here to find out r n minus 1 n I need r n n plus 1 and this series was truncated I mentioned to you earlier that r n n plus 1 n was the final layer n plus 1th layer is equal to 0 this is the substrate and whatever goes inside the substrate we say nothing comes back and starting from this given a structure I can calculate the reflectivity at the air fill interface. So this is the handle for our model fitting. Now once I have a structure I can find out the reflectivity using parrot formalism. So the first step that if I have a sample for example let me just consider a single layer. Suppose I have got a single nickel layer. I am using this example because I will show you the data for the same thing. Single nickel layer on a substrate and there is a nickel layer over here. This is basically a nickel film which is also used as a mirror in our experiment. Now in this case I can represent this nickel layer let's say from my common sense I might say 
that there is a thin layer at the substrate film interface which will have a different density then a bulk of the layer which will have another density and then there is the air film interface there is a thin layer so this single layer for the purpose of fitting the data I might break it up into a tri layer into a tri layer and when I make it into a tri layer then for this tri layer I start with some assumed values of densities, thicknesses, interface roughnesses so that means I represent this layers as a histogram as a histogram of densities histogram of densities and also the refractive index once I have this histogram I have shown here as an example as a schematic that if this is the true density pattern it is possible to represent it in a hist uh, discrete histogram like this and for this histogram I can use Parrot's formalism Parrot's formalism <coughs> to calculate the reflectivity index now in this case suppose I have got a tri layer now I keep playing this game of chi-square minimization as I have written here chi-square in this case is the experimental data log of that calculated data for this assumed model log of that and comparison between them at each and every point so it will be ri experimental ri calculated <coughs> or sorry here it is j so I should make a mistake I should j and j sum over all the measured points 1 by n by n minus 1 so this is the chi-square value and I have to minimize this chi-square to fit this model so I started please remember I started with an assumed model which gives me a histogram for the given sample here it is a single layer I broke it up just to as an example into three layers so that means my histogram will have only three layers for all three layers I have an assumed density thickness and then I fit the model and keep up doing it I just give an example of this nickel film a nickel multi-layer actually this is a nickel titanium multi-layer you can see the experimental data and you can see the fits so it was a nickel titanium multi-layer it was unpolarized due to reflectivity the experimental data has been fitted using this chi-square minimization technique so let me repeat parrot formalism is the starting point of model building using parrot formalism I can find out the reflectivity of a model structure and I keep changing it till I get a good fit with the experimental data and that will be my result or the fitted values in the real space given this reflectivity pattern so in real space I will get the results in terms of density, thickness, interface roughness etc etc now these chi-square minimization processes are also varied and today for reflectometry data each major source possibly will have its own uh, uh, optimization software available to you so like NIST does provide you NIST means uh, NIST neutron source NCNR NIST Center for Neutron Research if you go to their online site you will get a uh, program to fit your reflectometry data and uh, in this fit this is an unpolarized reflectometry and as I told you earlier that for the total thickness of the film we have got Kiesig oscillations and this was a multi-layer periodic bilayer so a periodic bilayer will act like a one dimension and crystal and for which I had this Brad P from this synthetic crystal or artificial crystal like just like actual crystallographic Bragg peak this is a Bragg peak only the number of layers are small so there is a finite number of planes it's a one dimension crystal then because this is a mesoscopic length scale the Bragg peak appears at a much lower Q 
at 0 0.06 here, for example, around 0 0.05 in this experimental results. So now, <coughs> let me repeat, parameters of thickness, density, interface roughness, and magnetic moment, density or direction, in case of polarized neutron reflectometry, we have to search in the parameter space. We know that it is important that we get the global minimum in the parameter space, which is actually the solu true solution for the problem, given problem. True solution means the parameters are the true parameters of the sample, which you don't know actually. So you are looking for a global minimum in parameter space starting from some assumed structure. So there are several techniques well known in this chi-square minimization process. One is steepest gradient, other is conjugate gradient. In case of steepest gradient, at one point in parameter space, that means it's a multi-dimensional parameter space with parameters like thickness, thickness, density, roughness and etc. If we assume that they are independent of each other, we can for this three we can have a three-dimensional parameter space and one point means a particular thickness, particular density, particular roughness. You start from there, calculate the gradient at this point by slight changing of the parameters and then move in the re this direction where the fall is the fastest in two dimension there will be several directions, but we move in that region, direction where the fall is fastest. I have used genetic algorithm, which is slightly different from these, and I would like to discuss briefly with you what is genetic algorithm technique. And I have found that one can reach solutions, reason, physically reasonable solutions in a much faster time. So it's a random search technique in the parameter space. And it mimics Darwin's survival of the fittest principle. So we start with a population of chromosomes. The chromosomes, I will show you what they are, are built usually with binary strings similar to a chromosome and made with parameters. And we make a mating pool where we mate the chromosomes get new chromosomes and each chromosome has a fitness function and from this we get a new pool of chromosomes which will have their own fitness functions. Let me explain to you. Let me take two parameters, just two parameters of a film, let us say. Thickness G and roughness sigma as an example. Let us consider that thickness is 10 angstrom and roughness as 5 angstrom as an initial case. And another case let us take thickness is 8 angstrom and roughness is 4 angstrom. Now, if I use a 4, four bit byte, 1, 2, 3, 4, so I said thickness 10, 10. So it will be uh, 0 into 2 to the power 0 plus 1 into 2 to the power 1 plus 0 1 0 into 2 to the power 2 plus 1 into 2 to the power 3 8 plus 2 10 so this is 1 0 1 0 so this is represented 1 0 1 0 let us consider the roughness as 5 angstrom again if I use a 4 bit representation I can increase the number of bits to get more resolution, just as an example, I have taken 4 bits. Then this 5 angstrom will be represented as uh, 1, 1, 0, 0. 2 to the power, sorry, this 0, 1, 2, so it is 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is the representation. Now, with these two, I can build a chromosome which is 8 bit long. This is I call a chromosome.
let me reduce it from here sorry seven eight so this will be one zero one zero zero one zero one now this thickness and roughness together forms a chromosome 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 yes. for my genetic algorithm simulation now i can also take another one another set of parameters for example thickness 8 angstrom and roughness 4 angstrom so 8 angstrom will be Eight, sorry, I did it in 9 angstrom, so call it thickness 9 angstrom, let us say, 9 angstrom. So it will be 1, this is uh, 8, this is 1, 8 plus 1, 9, and 4 angstrom means, this is actually um, 0, 1, this is 0, this is not 4 angstrom, this is, this is, sorry, this is 2 angstrom. So, excuse me, I was slightly wrong. So thickness 8 angstrom and uh, roughness 2 angstrom is another chromosome so one chromosome i created 10 angstrom thickness and 5 angstrom interface roughness another one i have created 9 angstrom thickness and not 5 angstrom 4 angstrom but 2 angstrom interface roughness so now between these two chromosomes i will be mating these two chromosomes just like real life the chromosomes are made in genetic algorithm and how do we do the mating? So first I have got a pool of such chromosomes. I showed you two such chromosomes in this, two such chromosomes, but you can make a pool of these chromosomes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8 and I have written it down the two chromosomes 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 and then yes. This is a 0, 0, 1, 1. So it was by mistake it was 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Sorry. 0, 0, 1, 1 this was one and this is the other chromosome and here I randomly choose a particular site and then I cut this part bring it here and cut this part and take it there this is known as crossover operation there is a crossover operation so now with this crossover operation from this point so that means 101 remains next part will be after 101 it will be 10010 this is the crossover similarly this part goes and added there so here it is cross it will be 101 and then 0011 so this will be the two two new chromosomes so after crossover there will be two new chromosomes now I choose one of any one of them and at a random site I switch in this binary representation. So switch means if it was 0 I have made it 1. So now I get after crossover and mutation a new value of parameters given by triple one zero one zero one zero. So I have used 4 bits to represent my parameters and I have explained to you the genetic algorithm operations that I will carry out and I will get from this gene I get a new uh, this chromosome one point is the gene and one chromosome gives me a new chromosome after crossover and mutation so this pool now we will have new eight chromosomes from the previous generation once I get this so generally we usually choose a range of parameters in form of binary sequence. So it depends what 
is it the upper limit of parameters what is the lower limit of parameters suppose uh, i have uh, thickness in the range of let us say 10 to angstrom to 100 angstrom and i want to write them as 4 bit 4 bit uh, chromosomes then lowest value will be xi l will be 10 then xi upper minus xi 10 will be 90 and then gives you 2 to the power l minus 1 means 2 to the power 4 minus 1 so much is the gap so there are 15 gaps so basically i'll have uh, 16 starting from the lowest to the highest 16 values of thickness similarly i can generate the gene the chromosome for the roughness depending on the length i choose and the lower and upper values now when i'm looking for a solution in parameter space say for thickness in case of which is xi let us say i will be looking for bit solution in xi l and xi h for each parameter so here the previous case i described you the parameters thickness and roughness they can be more if it is a multi-layer sample there will be many 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 thicknesses so your word length will be large and depending on the uh, chromosome length will be large and for each parameter depending on how much resolution you want the length the byte number of bits in the byte will increase and after crossover and mutation we will have a new set of chromosomes with a new set of parameters so again from this pool we choose chromosomes depending on their fitness now darwinian fitness is biological fitness in our case the fitness is the chi square so we evaluate chi square for the new parameters and then from them we choose the more fit ones that means lower value of chi squares and this we can design in our way we choose we chose an exponential uh, way of choosing uh, the chi square values from the range of parameters but that can be there are several techniques i don't want to give you any specific technique but the fact is that from the new pool we choose chi square values depending on the fitness so then this process goes on this search once we have got a new pool we choose parameters uh, choose the chromosomes which have got better fitness then between them we carry on again mating and mating means crossover and mutation again we get a new set so we can start with a large number of parameter chromosomes and keep on coming down to smaller and smaller values and hopefully will hit the global minima or the actual solution of the in the parameter space the advantage of genetic algorithm is the following the biggest is advantage is that unlike any other optimization technique the genetic algorithm process starts with a large set of parameters or multiple starting points in parameter space as i told you earlier steepest gradient or conjugate gradient techniques they start with only one point and there's a good chance that it will get stuck in a local minima there are you can assume that there are local minima in parameter space but here in this particular search technique because we start with many points I have this is an example I use that it is like a set of blind persons in a field which is a parameter space I have shown here a square parameter space with the lower limit and upper limit in one parameter lower limit and upper limit in one parameter as two independent axes and they are looking for the global minima in a blind manner they are blind people but every time they reach a new parameter set we choose their lower chi-square values and that's how they are approaching this global minima and because I'm starting from multiple points multiple number of you can say blind people then I have a better chance of missing this local minima and reaching the global minima so this is about genetic algorithm and I just use one example uh, used, we have fitted using genetic algorithm it was again that nickel titanium bilayer which we, I showed you some time back and you can see that I had uh, minimized the 
chi square and the fit quality is evident from the plot uh, using genetic algorithm for neutron reflectivity and polarized neutron reflectivity as well as x-ray reflectivity. Here actually interestingly as I told you that XRR and unpolarized neutron reflectometry both of them give structure of the film. So in this case these two experimental data are fitted independently and we've, and sorry fitted together with relative weightage decided by us depending on their experimental errors and the fit you can see that we have got uh, thickness and roughness of average roughness of nickel, nickel uh, thickness of the nickel layer titanium layer and their corresponding roughnesses using genetic algorithm so usually the data that i will be showing for our experiment we use the genetic algorithm technique but there is no restriction and other techniques are also equally good and available but biggest advantage of genetic algorithm that you start from multiple points in the parameter space and have a better chance of reaching the global minima unlike other techniques.